Story 1 On June 27, 2017, I had a heart attack at work. An ambulance took me to the nearby hospital, and the doctors discovered that my left anterior artery was blocked. The room was fairly noisy and active. Although they had a cloth screening the area where they were working, I caught sight of some bloody gauze being taken away. As I'm fairly squeamish about blood, I decided to look completely away from where they were working. There was a clock on the wall behind me and I decided to focus on that. I watched the clock move from 10 o'clock to 10.01 to 10.02. Suddenly I was in another place, a large room filled with rows of long tables. At each table there were people in lab coats doing science things, looking through microscopes, doing things with test tubes and scales, writing notes and occasionally talking to each other. Everyone was wearing white lab coats, but from the details I could see, hair, makeup, eyeglasses, it looked like they were from the 1950s or early 1960s. Except the gender balance was better than one might expect for a lab in the 1950s, almost evenly men and women. Also, there were no obvious laptops or other electronic devices. I was in the room with them, standing in front of the tables and observing, but the people were not noticing or interacting with me. The scene was relatively quiet, but not static. The scientists were occasionally talking softly to each other, moving, changing microscope slides, doing things with test tubes, and someone occasionally bringing something to someone else. It was peaceful and calm, and the scientists seemed to have a sense of purpose. The oddest thing about the scene was that everything was in black and white like an old movie, but I was not watching a movie. I was there in the room with them. If I'd looked down at myself, I would have been in black and white as well. I had no sense of time passing. I was standing there watching the scientists do their work for an indefinite period. It was calm and peaceful. From this calm scene, I was suddenly back on the operating table. People were shouting and I had curled up into the fetal position. My doctor was telling me to relax. I did, and they went on with the procedure. I looked back at the clock and it was 10.05. Just a few minutes had passed. What I later found out happened was that my heart had stopped in the middle of the procedure. This story was shared by Charles W. and happened in 2017. Story 2 I was calm as I left my body. Then I was put into a circular and dark, deep life review while in a fast-moving tunnel. I left my body going to the real south in direction. Yet I could only look to the east in the tunnel. I knew this was important, and so I only looked east. It was circular and dark except for the left side wall that was actual east. I went through the tunnel facing sideways. At first, flashes of my whole life happened very fast at like warp speed. I couldn't see or process anything but distinctly knew this was my life review. I saw a flash 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 of images without words. I felt calm. Then the flashes slowed down to where I saw all my close family, friends and those I love. I was surrounded by love. I didn't know anyone well who had passed away. I saw no relatives or spirit guides, but I think they could have been there. Then I was launched warp speed out of the dark tunnel. I fell out of the tunnel hundreds of feet in the sky. I was a flying spirit soul without a body. I felt pure bliss. I was in nature and flying up the valley. The mountains and nature were so beautiful. I saw colors and felt love on a much bigger scale than what we can on earth. While flying, I looked down and saw a small female child who was running down the mountain away from me. In a split second, I knew she was my child. She was from the future and I needed to go back to my body. There was no question about my decision. Suddenly, my soul flew backwards out of where she was in the beautiful mountains. I was launched through the tunnel at warp speed in the darkness. Finally, without feeling anything, I came back into my body. I have no fear of death in the spirit world. The little girl in my experience became my child eight years in the future. I totally believe in incarnation and other associated elements. I am writing this at age 47 and my experience occurred at age 25. This story was shared by Aaron Q and happened in 2000. Story 3 I've died twice. The first time I died was only for about three minutes or so. I had a typical NDE such as seeing a bright light and feeling very peaceful. I died for the second time about six years later. This was a lot rougher and I was gone for at least 30 minutes. Everyone expected my mind to be gone, but I came back fine. During the time I was gone, I had an experience. I was sitting on a huge chair like a throne. There were two doorways with no doors. It was just an arched doorway. The walls and the floor were tan. 
I think the doorways were actually mirrors of your spirit or soul. They showed you your deeds while on Earth. This mechanism is impossible to fool because you can't fool yourself. I was there maybe five minutes. I don't think your soul gets to that place until your body has been gone a long time. I feel a lot of experiences are made up of collapsing neural networks, etc. This was totally real and I was there. It was completely different than the short death experience I had earlier. A Chinese lady with a baby appeared at one point and she asked me what we were supposed to do. I told her that, I guess we have to pick a door. She asked me which one should she choose. I told her which door I thought was the wrong door to pick. My intention was to go through that door so she didn't have to choose that one. She went through the other door and was just gone. I came back into my earthly body. The nurses were talking about how they couldn't believe I could be alive because my body temperature was too low and that I had been gone too long. Much more happened but words can't describe the otherness of where I was and whatever was beyond those doors. I know you can come back from that place, but once that door touches you, it's done. And it's not a bad thing. Yesterday, something told me to seek out men of the cloth and let them hear of my experience. People fear death and they shouldn't. We all go through it eventually. You can't cheat it. It would be like cheating yourself. Death is our reward. This story was shared by Todd C. and happened in 2014 and 2020. Story 4 In 1963, I was hit by a car while riding my bike. My body flew 40 feet from the site of impact. I do not remember the accident, but I do remember watching myself being loaded into the ambulance. It was the old-fashioned kind, like a hearse where the one back door opens all the way. My next thought was one of floating through white clouds. There was no sky, no ground, no trees, and no animals. I was floating toward an open gate where the light coming from beyond was brighter than the sun, but soft enough that you could look at it. I saw a long line of people, four or five, going into the gate. As I approached the gate, I was greeted by my grandmother and who I knew to be her sister, although we had never met. My grandmother told me to go back. It wasn't my time, but I still approached her. After much meditation on the experience as to whether there were arms and legs, I remembered. My grandmother's sister raised her arm out of the mist and pointed and said, Look. As I turned and looked, I saw an ambulance going down the road about to go under an overpass. As I turned back to my grandmother, I opened my eyes and I was back in the ambulance and we were going under that overpass. The next thing I remember was waking up in the hospital. I had a cast on my left leg from my toes to my hip. The first thing I said to my mother who was rubbing my temples when I woke up was, I saw grandma. Shh, she said. We will talk about that later. Well, later never came, and my young mind soon forgot about it. Over the years, I have wondered if it was even real. I wish my mom would have talked to me about it. But even more than that, I wish that I were able to go through the gate to see the other side. Are there trees and animals in heaven? I do not know, but I do know that I experienced something beyond this life. Although the thoughts are very vivid, my mind still has trouble accepting the fact that it happened. This story was shared by David R. and happened in 1963. Story 5 The doctor told me I was dying. I knew I was terribly sick, but the news made me emotionally freeze, followed by fear. My loved ones came to my hospital bedside and said their final goodbyes. My pastor said a final prayer for me. Everyone was leaving my room. My son looked back and said, Goodbye, Mommy. I'll come back to see you tomorrow to brush your hair. This was so heart-wrenching. In my thoughts, I cried out to God to please help me because I did not want to die. But I could not stay awake any longer. Next thing, I was above my body. I knew that I was dead. It was dark in the room, but I could see light. I was fearful at first, but the closer I got to the light, my feelings started changing. All fear and negativity disappeared. I did not walk into the light yet it felt like I was being pulled into it. It was like being slowly sucked in. This light was so bright, yet it wasn't blinding and it didn't hurt my eyes. The light was soft and comfortable, but brighter than looking at the sun. When I reached the brightest point, I was no longer moving. I was at peace. I felt so many positive and wonderful feelings like calmness, peace, joy, love, and trust. In that moment, my experience was orders of magnitude better than any kind of earthly experience. For instance, I consider a mother's joy and love felt from the birth of her child as the best earthly feeling. 
but this experience makes that appear like a drop of water compared to a vast sea or ocean. There was no other place I wanted to be. I could see a white, shadowy female figure. I heard a voice, but the male voice did not come from this figure. I was told to go back, all is well. The voice wasn't heard with my ears but with my mind. I wanted to get closer to them but couldn't. I knew that this was the boundary. When I refused to come back, the white, shadowy figure came closer to me. I knew this was my grandmother who raised me. She was bathed in soft, bright white light. It looked like cottony soft clouds unlike wearing clothes. She told me that it wasn't my time and that I had to return. She didn't say why, but I knew it was because my work on earth wasn't done. My children needed me. This knowledge didn't come from me. It was given to me in that moment. Yet still, I did not want to return. In one quick movement, I was back in my body. The light was gone and I woke up in my hospital room as I gasped for air. This story was shared by Layla D and happened in 2004.